Hi, my name is Tafet Patankar and I am an intervention neurodiologist from Lee General Infirmary. Today I'm going to show you some cases of uh, mechanical thrombectomy in hyperacute stroke and the benefits of this treatment, which is probably one of the most exciting thing in medicine at the moment. And it has changed lives in thousands and thousands of patients across the world. Let's look at our first case. This is a 72-year-old lady with left-sided weakness. She's a wake-up stroke, present with a stroke at 8 o'clock, comes to A&E in about 15-20 minutes, and is seen by the BAT team. The brain attack team records the NIHS as 22. CT scan was done pretty quickly, around 9.30, where you can see that there are some low-density changes probably aspects about eight with the right MCA thrombus. A CT angiogram has, is done immediately on the table and that kind of shows that there is a significant perfusion deficit as you can see on this slide that shows signal change on the right MCA territory. Now what you need to look at mainly is the blood volume, blood flow, mean transit and the Tmax. But the rapid AI that we use, blood flow volume maps, and compare them with the Tmax maps. So you can see that the cerebral blood flow is around less than 34%, is around 45 ml, whereas the Tmax greater than 6 seconds is about 111 ml. Now when we compare that, and this is probably the most important slide, where you have a Tmax and CBF um, side to side, which gives you the mismatch volume, about 83 ml in the right MCA territory, with a mismatch ratio of about 4. So you're looking at somebody with a significant perfusion deficit in the right cerebral hemisphere. By 10.15, the patient is in the angiolab, and within a few minutes, you can see the right MCA territory has been completely recanalized. And the point that I'm trying to make here that by 8.15, 8.30, the patient is in the scanner, and by 10.15, the patient was recanalized completely. And that is very, very important part of the procedure. Time is brain, and you got to get in as soon as we can. And you see the benefits on the CT scan at 24 hours. One, very little ischemia is seen, as you can see, in the right temporal lobe and the basal ganglia. And the 24-hour NIHS was 4. So you can see patient has significantly improved following mechanical thrombectomy. And that is very important. The first lesson we all need to know is try and get the patient into the lab as soon as you can and recanalize as soon as you can. Let's look at the second case. This is a 60-year-old lady presents with a stroke. NIHS is of 22, two and a half hours per onset, but unfortunately contraindicated for thrombolysis. A CT scan shows a dense MCA, as you can see, and a CTA shows a sudden occlusion of the middle cerebral artery. We decided to use conscious sedation because that's what we do for most of these patients. And you can see there is a certain cutoff of the right MCA and poor collateral flow on the right side. Initial aspiration didn't work, so we put a stent across the trevo, which is across the stenosis with a distal axis aspiration catheter. And this showed complete recanalization of the right MCA, but there was some sluggish flow in the anterior temporal branch. Lateral views show some perfusion deficit, as you see, in the anterior temporal region, and then if you look at the frontal and the lateral view, you can see that the anterior temporal branch is a bit missing. Now, would you treat this? Well, in normal circumstances, the patient general anesthetic, that's what we would do. But here you can yeah. see... You have the, the blockage, we have removed it, okay? Oh. And you've done very well. Can you do something for me? Okay, you know you were not moving your hand and leg. Can you show me whether you can move your hand? Awesome. Can you hold my hand? Oh, God, you've got strength now. Good. What about your leg? Can you move your leg? Awesome. Yeah, sure. That's good. Let me... Can you tell me your name? Okay. How are you feeling? 
Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good, superb. You're going through a hard time, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, but we're getting there, okay? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to put this back on, okay? Thank yes. you. I'll see you soon, all right? And the patient was completely normal, so, and was discharged home. The point that I'm trying to make here is that it is very, very important to remember the patient and if the patient improves on the table, you might not need to pursue small occlusions or distal occlusions or some vessel missing. And that is a benefit of doing this procedure in conscious sedation. Let's look at case number three. This is a young boy. He was a lead student. He presented with a stroke one and a half hours from onset. And luckily the BBC were filming something in the Millennium Square and they found, they actually filmed him having a stroke. He was brought in, he got IV thrombolysis, but it did not improve. His CT scan showed a dense MCA in the left side, and but the brain looked pretty good. Again, we took him through angio, and you can see there is a filling defect in the left middle cerebral artery and a perfusion deficit in the left uh, MCA territory. This was opened up immediately and you can see that the whole MCA territory has been recanalized with a TK3 score, which is really good for a young boy. And we were pretty quick in recanalizing this artery. This was a very old device that you can see. There is a, this is a revived device and it shows a clot and it was very good, but not necessarily he was successful in all the cases. But the point that I'm trying to make, the technology is improved, this device gave us good results in the beginning, but not necessarily in all the cases. And the benefits of the treatment is driving the industry to actually move on and improve the devices. So we are having so many new devices coming in, into the market, and they all are significantly improving our results in recanalizing the vessels. Probably we're getting more TK3 scores than what we used to do in the past. So that's one of the beauty about the whole treatment. The last case I'm gonna show you is again an MCA occlusion. But here you can see there's a left MCA occlusion on a CTA. It's a dominant hemisphere, so it's very difficult because the patients are very restless to get a very safe and effective procedure. We will still try conscious sedation if we can, but if we can't, then we would give general necessary. Here the patient was very restless. There was no question that we were gonna do GA. And you can see the general necessary was given around 4 p.m. CTA shows in occlusion, and you can see again there is very poor collateral flow in the left MCA territory. And here they have used a solitaire stent, as you can see the markers the solid is across and there is a much more closer look to show the solitaire and the complete recanalization with TK3 score seen and you can see very often now in some of these devices Trevo and solitaire I'm not working for the industry but they are my primary devices that I use and I've had good successes with both these devices and this patient again did extremely well